swim, bike, run. This is Endurance FM with Graham Brown. Hey everybody, it's Endurance FM. Endurance FM number six, my name is Graham Brown. Today I'm going to bring you a special episode, a roundup of the last five episodes. What's going on in Endurance FM? A little bit about the story behind this project and what comes next. So, starting at the top. Well, we've done five episodes now and they really have been special. I've really enjoyed every single one of the guests that came on to Endurance FM in the last five episodes. It's been a lot of fun and more so inspirational, which is really in the theme of what Endurance FM is about. So Endurance FM is about the entrepreneurs of endurance. And the reason why this came about, it was something that I'd been thinking about for a long time, but I always had in my sort of busy working life, this this constant dynamic tension, like my two passions. One was being an entrepreneur and helping entrepreneurs. I work with entrepreneurs both as an investor, as a mentor, and also running mastermind groups for entrepreneurs. And my other passion is endurance sports, specifically triathlon, specifically Ironman triathlon. So if I was doing one, I wasn't doing the other. So if I was working on my business, I wasn't training. If I went out training, I wasn't working on my business. So it was one or the other. It was a binary existence. So the idea that I could bring these together was, for me, really exciting. But I didn't know if it could work. A, I didn't know if there was enough people out there. And B, I didn't know that there was enough of an interest in this niche because Look at it like this, entrepreneurs of endurance sports. These are people who bring us the endurance sports we love, whether they're race directors or coaches or people developing apps or cycling clothing brands, whatever it may be. The interesting thing about this subset of this little tribe is there's there's a sort of, I guess there's a dynamic tension there as well that, you know, being an entrepreneur is about breaking rules and being an endurance sport athlete is about following rules. So how do you marry these two together? Because it's an interesting bunch of people. There's a real, you know, there's a real flashpoint of energy there of people who are entrepreneurs within endurance sports. It's a very small group compared to, you know, the bigger world, whether it's entrepreneurs or endurance sports people. But, you know, there's that real sense of energy that sense of mission that goes along with these people that not only do they have that entrepreneurial drive they have that that endurance sport drive and if you were to listen to any of these interviews and i'll talk about the episodes that i've done in a minute what you'll find is that they these people are insanely driven they have an energy and a way of making things happen and this goes way back often to their early life where these ideas and techniques were set for them to go out and make a change in not just their lives but other people's lives as well so let's have a look at the five the first five i should say because you know i didn't know a if there were going to be enough people out there and b if there's any interest but the first five episodes of endurance fm have just been i've just loved doing them hopefully You've enjoyed them as well. So episode one was with Frank Soul from Soul Swim Solutions. Really enjoyed that episode. The first one, I didn't know what we were going to expect, but Frank is just a powerhouse of motivation. I absolutely loved that interview with him. Now, the interesting thing about Frank was he left his comfortable, quote unquote, position of director of engineering at one of New Jersey's leading hospitals. So he left the Northeast and went, moved to Arizona, Scottsdale, Arizona, to pursue his passion of coaching, swim coaching specifically. And he traded this life, which was comfortable, with a regular paycheck, with, you know, well, all the trappings of being a salaried worker, the benefits, the security, for going out there, doing what he loves, and doing it with absolutely no floor underneath him no comfort zone no anything 
and just go ahead and doing it you know making that change it's it's a massive change you know especially for his generation where you know there aren't many people we talk about this in the interview his generation there aren't a lot of people especially from that you know where he grew up that did that kind of thing you know there weren't many people who got up and simply became entrepreneurs or pursued their passions because they spent their lives dedicated to salaried comfortable existences that's what their parents wanted for them and that's what they ended up doing so it's really inspirational about learning how people make that switch you know they've moved from their comfort zone where they could quite happily spend the rest of their lives because they wanted to grow and they wanted to challenge themselves and become better people and they took a lot of risk in the process and it doesn't always pay off it doesn't always go in a straight line. But they stepped outside of their comfort zone, which brings me to EFM, Endurance FM number two, which was with Graham Ross from Kusaga. Now, Graham Ross, he, from an early age, was doing a lot of crazy endurance stroke extreme sports, whether he was going at 270k on his motorbike or just riding his bikes around the outback. The interesting thing about Graham, again, there's this desire in us entrepreneurs to live outside our comfort zone. And maybe what it is, is at first, you know, first calling we are entrepreneurs, and the second calling we find endurance sports, because maybe what defines us as entrepreneurs and what you find in Graham's story is you know, we want to constantly push ourselves beyond our comfort zone because we seek adventure. We're not happy with living in that little world. We feel we need to get out there and push, even if that pushing means pain, discomfort, fear, all the kind of negative emotions that go with stepping outside of our comfort zone. And Graham's done this both as an entrepreneur and also getting up and moving to new countries where he moved to Singapore and set up a business there, moved back to Australia, but also looking at, you know, completing the Ironmans. I think he's completed 13 Ironman races now, as well as twice completing the Great Wall Marathon. So I think that's what it is, is that, you know, we as entrepreneurs, we define ourselves by this desire for challenge you know where i am here in japan there's this saying which i think is fitting is that the frog who lives in the well never knows the ocean the frog who lives in the well never knows the ocean and i think it's important to understand that the frog chooses to live in the well because it's dark small comfortable you know it's defined boundaries of their world but we as entrepreneurs especially as endurance sports entrepreneurs want to know the ocean we want to get out there and challenge ourselves even if the ocean is dangerous and boundaryless, we want to get out there and do this stuff, right? Endurance FM, EFM number three was with Travis McKenzie from NTSQ Sports, which stands for Never the Status Quo. So again, we're on this riff again about challenging the status quo. And I guess the thing is the status quo tells us when we grow up, what we can do with our lives. And for most people, that means get a job, work hard, you know, get the benefits, achieve a good position, get a bigger car, a bigger house, and all that kind of nonsense, that rat race. But we seek something else as endurance entrepreneurs. And we understand that when somebody tells us something, we don't often accept that as the truth. We probably learned that at a young age. So if somebody tell us, tells us this is the way to live, we say, well, maybe for you, but for me, I'm going to go and explore the options. And there's that real curiosity there. And the interesting thing about Travis McKenzie's story is how that's applied when we face massive adversity. And in EFM number three, there's this interesting, I suppose defining more than interesting moment in Travis's story where he's training for Ironman and he he has this near-fatal bike crash. 
And the doctors tell him that he's left with a 97% chance of never walking again. And he goes into detail in the in the interview about the injuries, you know, fused vertebrae and all kinds of weird shit. So what do you do? It's like somebody telling you these are your life options. For Travis, again, there's that entrepreneurial drive which is saying, yeah, well, maybe that's your worldview, but I'm going to go and explore this for myself. And where does that come from? Well, it must come from somewhere in the in you know our childhood. Travis talks about how being 10 years old, he goes on this trip to Kona, Hawaii to watch his father compete in the Ironman World Championships. And growing up in Australia around in the early 90s around these elite athletes, it gives you this sense that anything is possible. So when somebody tells you you've got 97% chance of never walking again, what do you do? Well, most people accept it. It's like the witch doctor pointing the bone. You accept it. You accept what the witch doctor says. But for somebody like Travis, it wasn't the case. He didn't accept it. He's been brought up with this idea that, you know, you have to go and explore your own reality. You have to go and write your own story. And he went through this process of rehabilitation and he eventually gets himself back to a situation where he's now competing in Ironman again and winning winning his age groups. You know, he also qualified for, qualified for Ironman uh, Texas. I think he qualified for Kona. I'm not sure. I have to double check. I don't remember. But at this point, he also leaves what he calls, quote unquote, an easy job at Lululemon, the... Uh, lifestyle sports brand to go and pursue his own entrepreneurial itch because this thing just went like down you know this voice inside that says I want to go and do this myself I want to go and make my own mistakes and that's what it's about you know being an entrepreneur it's not something which you choose lightly it's something in a way that chooses you from an early age you just had to do this stuff yourself. If you, you know, if your mom said to you, don't look through the hole in the fence, you look through the hole in the fence. I remember my mom would say to me, you know, don't touch that, you'll burn your fingers. What was my reaction? I want to touch it. I want to experience it for myself. That was always my reaction. I had to touch it and get burnt because I had to do these things myself to experience them myself to learn my own mistakes rather than somebody telling me don't do it and I think that's really what drives us entrepreneurs even if it's painful even if it's uncomfortable we need to go and learn our own mistakes and experience them ourselves EFM number four with Neil Porter changing gears here slightly was very interesting Neil Porter from My Bike and I now, he's got this entrepreneurial itch where he's a, a passionate cyclist. And one of the things about cycling, you know, the first time you come into cycling, you understand it's a little bit elitist. It's very alpha male. And that attracts a lot of alpha males because you have this sort of hierarchy in cycling clubs and all that kind of nonsense. And Neil Porter wanted to change that. So he's got a background in retail and men's fashion. So he wants to build this cycling clothing brand, which is a lot more inclusive, not just for guys, but for girls as well. And that's a huge growing area of cycling, female cyclists, as well as endurance sports generally. And the interesting thing about what we learn when we pursue these crazy goals, whether it be starting businesses or completing Ironmans or the Great Wall Marathon or as we'll find in a minute, Ultraman, is all about pace. And the thing is, I think what we want naturally is we want everything now, very soon, but we have to approach these things like investors, slow and steady wins the race. 
And as Neil Porter would tell you, when I did the interview with him, he just came back from a climb of Mont Ventoux in the Alps. And Mont Ventoux is like, you know, one of the iconic climbs in on the Tour de France. It's not every year because it's so difficult. They don't put it on there every year. Not just difficult for the cyclists, but also just organizing it. The last time it was there in the Tour de France, they shut down the final uh, the final kilometer that from the Flamme Rouge to the end because of the high wind so they diverted it so they didn't finish at the top because it was too dangerous and it is a tough climb people have died on that climb and if you watch any of the iconic outtakes from previous Tour de France you've got like Lance Armstrong versus Marco Pantani on Mont Ventoux one of the iconic moments in the Tour de France where these two guys are just going at it you know, going crazy speeds up Mont Ventoux to the finish and just dropping the whole pack. It's a tough climb and it's relentless. And to do this, you've got to do it slow and steady. You've got to do it one kilometer at a time. And that's what Neil Porter learned in climbing Ventoux twice. And it's also how he's building his cycling brand is that you've got to build it one fan at a time. Which basically means, you know, find the fans who love your brand and focus on them. Don't try, don't go out and try and get hundreds of thousands of new new customers, you know, new likes for your Facebook, whatever. Focus on the people who love what you do and use them as the marketing department for your brand. They will go and tell their friends. You know, every fan knows 15 people who are also into the sport. And they will then go and tell those 15 people. And those 15 people will tell 15 people and so on. And eventually you grow a brand with passionate fans. But you've got to do it with this attitude of the long term. And I suppose if you look at anything, if you go back to all the interviews all the endurance sports entrepreneurs that I interviewed, what sets them apart from the average person is time frames. That you don't go into an Ironman wanting immediate results. It's a long race. It's a long training season. And it takes a long time to get results. And it's the same in business as entrepreneurs as well. I guess the difference between an entrepreneur and a normal salaried worker is the entrepreneur understands that to get ahead in life, to grow, you have to invest for the long term. Now, investing for the long term can mean a number of things. Obviously, financially. So putting money into assets and letting those grow long term, just like planting seeds and watching the crop grow. That's the only way that you can get long term yields, long term wealth. And the same with your time as well. When you're starting a business, everybody who starts a business starts with no money, gets no money. So it's tough. But if you're short-term focused and you can't wait for the long-term results, then it's going to be really hard to sit out the tough times in being an entrepreneur. You, you give up after three months, six months, because, oh yeah, I tried that and it didn't work out. And it's the same with being an endurance sport athlete as well, because when you do an Ironman or you cycle Mont Ventoux or run the Great Wall Marathon, it ain't a fun experience. Let me put it that way. There are many times during that race where you go through, and a lot of the coaches will tell you, dark periods. And those dark periods come in many forms. You're tired, you're cold, you're sad, you're feeling pain. And there's a voice in your head saying, give up. And you want to get off the bike and sit down or you want to just stop running and stand at the feed station. Whatever it is, there's that voice in you saying, give up because the pain is too great at that moment that you want to give it all up. But then you remember that you've been training for this for 12 months and you're not going to give up. You've got to keep going. That this is burning yes inside you that needs to be dealt with. And it's the same with a business. You go through these uncomfortable times and you have these voices, not just in your head, but around you, these people 
saying, oh, why don't you go back to your salaried life? But they don't say it like that. They might say, oh, you know, you don't want to give up your comfortable job. You, you know, why do you throw away your career? Think about your education, all these kind of things. But there's this ability to understand that to grow, we have to go through pain and discomfort. And we've got to go through that to get to the other side. EFM 5 with Greg McDermott sorry, was a really inspiring episode, as they all were. They're just getting better and better. Greg McDermott cycled 14,000 kilometers around Australia to raise money for kids and also completed Ultraman. Now, this is coming from a guy who himself said that he was a bit of a drinker. He liked 10 to 12 beers, in his own words, with his mates after a game of football or watching the football. As he said, he was the guy that would be there on a Saturday afternoon with his shirt off, drunk with his mates. That's Greg. That's the Greg that we all knew and loved. But at one point, he decided, that's enough. I don't want to do this anymore. And this is a really interesting insight into what it takes to become successful, both as an endurance sport athlete, as an entrepreneur, particularly those combined. It's to be successful, you have to say no. One of the things we learn is that as entrepreneurs, particularly, we say yes to everything, yes to every opportunity, yes to every potential piece of work, yes to every customer, every client, and so on, every meeting, every phone call, every event. And we get overwhelmed. But it's only when we start saying no, like we say no to this customer, no to this event, no to that meeting, do we allow ourselves the space to grow? And this is very similar in the stories that we tell about ourselves. So Greg McDermott had this story that he told about himself, that he was one of the lads, hung out with his mates on a Saturday, liked to drink, and they loved him for that. He was the joker. But to say no is to change that story and replace that with a better story. So he then gave up drinking and he's completely changed his diet from what he was eating at the time, which was, I guess, pretty unhealthy to a completely plant-based diet. And he lost weight. He went from 40% body fat to 10% body fat in seven months, which is crazy. And then he completed an Ultraman, which, if I'm right, an Ultraman starts, it's a three-day Ironman, starts with the 10K swim, then I think day one there's about 100, and, I don't know if it's 180K, but 100 odd K of cycling after a 10K open water swim, and then day two is about, about 250K of cycling again which is longer than your average Tour de France stage. And then day three, you finish with a double marathon. This is crazy. So you've got to have inside you this big why to finish because that race, just like any endurance race, but that race more than any, is all about getting through the dark moments, getting through the why. And you have to find within yourself this story that supports that why. And I think that that is what these five entrepreneurs have taught me that I've learned is that the power of story, the power of story, both in making change and growing as an individual. And there's a great line from Harley Davidson, which says, when writing the story of your life, don't let anybody else hold the pen. And think about that in the context of most people. I think other people hold the pen in writing the story of their life. And those other people could be the man on TV, the priest, the parent, friends, family, whatever. Expectations of other people. They write that story for them. But when you write your own story, grab that pen and write that story. It creates this big why inside you. And that gives you reason to do these things and get through these dark places. And it's not just dark places of Ultraman. It's dark places starting a business. 
because that is an endurance sport on its own. So Greg McDermott, his business is coaching. And having completed Ultraman and this 14,000 kilometer bike ride and coaching athletes, one of the things he's learned is about how to set goals and achieve goals. And using the power of accountability in doing this. And in a way, this is like putting the no out there, saying no to opportunities in life so you can grow, but making it public. Like, for example, Greg saying that I'm not going to drink again. And if I drink again, I'm going to pay one of my mates a thousand bucks or whatever it was. And how that is important for achieving our goals. But the important thing is about overcoming resistance. Whether you're an endurance sport athlete or an entrepreneur, this resistance, the lizard brain that holds us back, both from ourselves and the people around us. And there's a Jim Rohn quote, Jim Rohn, the um, personal development, self-development author and mentor to people like Tony Robbins, said, you know, we are the sum of the five people that you we hang around with on a regular basis. So we are the sum of the five people we hang around with on a regular basis. Think about that. Now let's put this into context of Greg McDermott. When he decided that he was gonna give up drinking, lose weight and start endurance sports, one thing he learned was that he faced resistance, not necessarily from himself, but the people around him. His friends, and this is in the interview in EFM5, set up a Facebook page which said, you know, bring the old Greg back, something like that. So that's pretty overt resistance. It's a bit of fun, but there's a serious message there that people don't want to let him go. People don't want to let him change and evolve and grow as an individual. They want him as the old Greg. And that's the same when you go and you start a business. People might say, yeah, that's really good. Well done, you. Hope it goes well. But a lot of people inside are eating their heart out because they secretly want you to fail. Why? Why do people want you to fail? Why do people want the worst for you? Why do they people want you know, all the pain and the hurt that goes with failure? Not because they want to inflict that on you. Not because they're jealous. Because if you're successful breaking out and escaping the cubicle and you make a go of your life and a good living and you follow your passion and you become happy and find your voice, they look at themselves and think, why didn't I do that? And it's easier for them to see you fail than it is for them to answer that question. But to answer that question opens up a whole shit can of worms, which they don't want to deal with. But it's so much easier for you to fail because then that vindicates in their own mind why it was easier, like the frog in the well, to stay in the well. And in Greg McDermott's story, he says overtly in this story about how he overcame resistance from friends and family in making change. And importantly, how when you want to get ahead and rewrite your story or write a better story for your life. And I believe that if you want a better life, you have to tell a better story. That's simply it. It's about the stories that we tell ourselves. If you want a better life, you just have to find a better story that you keep telling yourself. You know, are you the guy that goes down the pub and takes his shirt off in Saturday afternoon, hangs out with his mates? Or are you the guy that's an endurance sport athlete and an entrepreneur? We have to find a better story to tell ourselves. And the problem is, is that a lot of that story is defined by the people around us. So we can't change the people around us. And that's the problem. To get ahead, sometimes we have to leave people behind. And that is the biggest challenge. In all of these stories, you'll find within that, this evolution, this step out of the comfort zone from a comfortable life to a world of challenge, a world of adventure as an endurance sport athlete, as an entrepreneur. And core to that is saying no and leaving people behind. Not in a negative way, but to understand that that part of your story is now history and you have to move on and reinvent your social network and find a better group of people to hang around with. You know, are you hanging around with people who are getting drunk on a Saturday afternoon, going out boozing on a Monday night, or are you hanging around with people on a Saturday morning who are getting up at six in the morning and 
smashing three or four hours on the bike or people who are, you know, during a weekday, not watching TV when they get home, but getting to work on their businesses. Because what happens is, is your stories, your goals become a composite of their goals as well. We absorb our worldviews and our outlook based on the kind of goals that those people that we hang around with come out with as well. You know, whether we like it or not, we're human, we're human beings, we are social beings. We want to fit in. We absorb the attitudes and expectations of the people we hang around with. So if we hang around with people who watch TV, talk about celebrity gossip, or, you know, get drunk at the weekend, or, you know, the only thing that they look forward to in life is those two weeks in the sun, we will become like that, whether we like it or not. If you don't want that, then you have to leave those people behind. And that's the tough decision that you have to make as an endurance sport athlete and an entrepreneur. So as much as these stories, these five first five stories are all about motivation and inspiration, I think what they address more than anything is the tough, the juggler issue that to grow as an individual, we have to say no. And that is the tough thing. That is the discomfort that we have to face. But that is what we have in hopefully stacks heaps is that we as endurance sport athletes and entrepreneurs have this capacity to endure discomfort and that enables us to step outside of the well and know the ocean so that was the first five episodes of endurance fm hopefully you enjoyed those and you got as passionate about them as i did because i am totally stoked about these interviews and there is more to come If you are an endurance sport entrepreneur and you want to get on the show, then go to endurancefm.com and fill out the form there. Just shoot me a a message. Let me know a little bit about your story. If it's anything like the kind of stories we talked about already, love to have you on the show. If you're one of the people that are bringing us the endurance sports that we love, whether you're a race director or clothing brand uh, owner or coach app developer, whatever it is, and you live and breathe endurance sports, then come on the show because I'd love to be able to share your story and inspire people just like us to grow and become better individuals. That's what it's about. Endurance FM, voice of the endurance sports business. If you haven't subscribed to Endurance FM on iTunes already, go and check out the link on endurancefm.com. Thank you so much for sharing this time with me. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know shoot me a, a an email you know my email address if you're on the newsletter it's also published on the website endurancefm.com and i look forward to interacting with you down the line shoot me an email let me know a little bit about your story as well and i will do my best endeavor to share more stories like this upcoming here on endurance fm my name is Graham Brown. endurance fm voice of the endurance sport business Find out more at www.endurancefm.com.